Welcome back to another episode of Park the Bus from the Gazette and the Iowa Prep Sports Podcast Network. We're going to talk some Iowa high school soccer. Nathan Ford and Ryan Plagenkuhl here. But first, uh, how about those Minnesota Timberwolves, Ryan? Oh, how about them? How about them, Nathan? Uh, this is the most excited I've been since uh, it's been 20 years. Um, the Kevin Garnett era back in 2003, 2004. This is the last the last time they've had a team uh, that good, and it might even be better than that 03 04 team. So I'm pretty excited about how game one went. Yeah. Usually you're probably not balancing uh, high, any kind of soccer with Timberwolves viewing, but that's going to be a, a new challenge for you this year, probably. Yeah, that's that's right. I, I watched a, uh, uh, a Loons game yesterday, and they, they beat Charlotte 3 to 0. So, you know, if the Timberwolves, uh, end up failing this year at least i have um you know the loons to to fall back on this year there you go well we had some uh exciting games in iowa high school soccer again of course some shakeups in their rankings on the boys side we're gonna start there there's a couple new number one teams this week i think notably to the gazette audience in class 1a iowa city regina taking over that top spot what can you tell us about the rankings shakeups here this week on the ihsaa side yeah, so in Class 1A, there was uh, the number one team actually got beat last week. Uh, Gladbrook, Rhinebeck, uh, Grundy Center, they got beat by Hudson. Um, and Hudson was a team that that was not in the rankings uh, last week. They are now. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty good team. Uh, but they, they got beat 1-0 um, against Hudson. So uh, Regina, West Branch, West Liberty – and North Fed Valley all went 2-0, and so they moved up a spot. So that's your area teams. I mean, that's a pretty pretty loaded conference there with Regina, West Branch, and West Liberty on that side. So um, uh, that's going to be a, a, an interesting interesting conference race as we go on here. Um, and it's going to kind of decide itself. Regina plays – they play Beckman Wednesday, and Beckman uh, – took a loss last week too and just fell out of the rankings but Beckman's another good team in that conference and then Regina also plays West Liberty on Friday and I forget whether that's at at Regina or West Liberty but um, that's going to answer some questions too I think uh, once we see the outcome of that game so uh, yeah so number one Regina number two West Branch number three West Liberty number four NFV so I'm a lot of good area schools represented there in class 1a um, and then just kind of moving on to two A, Williamsburg comes in at that number six spot. Um, after another solid week, they find themselves eight and one, kind of uh, staying strong without uh, Ma- Mason Eggleston, um, their le- their leading scorer on on board there. And so that's been impressive to see. And Max Wadianka has really kind of carried that offense without without Mason on the field. And then Nicora uh, stays in at number at number nine. Um, so that's kind of it for the area 2A teams. 3A, we have Marion, and we have Clear Creek of Mana. And hold on for just a second. Definitely Marion. And then 4A, we have Linmar coming in at number... Were they five, Nathan? I'm trying to look back now, actually. I think Linmar is number six this week. Linmar's number six. Okay. And then Iowa City West comes in at number four. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. So some pretty good area teams, pretty good area teams. You know, Linmar had a heck of a week. Um, And as, you know, as long as we're going to transition into kind of the the teams of the week, maybe that's where I'll take it. Uh, You know, Nathan, it's funny. We talked about weather and how things had kind of gotten better. I think on the show last week and then uh, last week was just full of a bunch of rainouts. That's my bad. Um, <laughs> no, it's it it happens. It happens. Of course, as soon as you say the weather's going to be nice, it it goes the other way. But uh, so my my original plans to see games this last week totally got thrown thrown in the air, and um, so I ended up going to see Linmar. I saw, I saw the girls on Wednesday night, and the boys actually on on Thursday night because of some uh, some rainouts, and you know they have that turf field there at Linmar, so they're. Um, you know, pretty well insulated for uh, holding on to some rain, but, but on the boy side, boy, they had a, they had a heck of a week. Um, They'd beaten April 13th. They beat Waukee Northwest. That's a a highly ranked 4A team. Um, And then Thursday they beat Xavier four to one and Xavier's a a ranked team as well. 
Um, and then they had a big win Saturday against Prairie 1-0. So a heck of a week for Linmar. And that's why they find themselves uh, ranked in the top 10 now. Um, a deserved ranking for for the Lions. Uh, so it's definitely, definitely a team that had a great week. Uh, another team that's just been solid is Iowa City High. They went 3-0 and last week, wins over Dubuque Senior. Uh, Iowa City Liberty and North Scott mm -hmm. outscored their opponents 10-1. to They just seem to be kind of solid and steady. And then Iowa City West also had a nice week uh, going 2-0. and A 10-0 win against Jefferson. And then they uh, they defeated Prairie 2-1 to the following day. And, and Prairie's, Prairie's a tough school. They're a tough team. And um, you know, they're, they're kind of, Prairie's kind of going through that gauntlet right now. So, um, but yeah, those, those three teams really, uh, really had nice weeks there and all, uh, all in class four a there. Uh, and then Marion too, I should mention Marion. Um, they blanked, uh, clear Creek Amana three to zero, uh, and then a 10 0 win against West Delaware. So some really impressive team, really, really impressive week for some area teams there. Yeah. Linmar uh, has been on the rise here. I, that's kind of a team that I, I think about quite a bit because my first week at the Gazette was the boys state soccer tournament in 2015 and Linmar won the cha state championship. They came, they went back to state the next year and they haven't been back since. So it's always been one of those teams that I've looked at to be like, I, I know there's, there's usually talent on that roster and they just haven't been able to piece it together. But now Corey Brinkmeyer back as the coach. And it looks like they they're back among those state contenders. Obviously it's still going to be difficult to get there because they're probably going to face somebody tough out of the Eastern side of the state, but it is kind of fun to see them back and winning and in the top six now of the rankings. And then with that Regina and West Liberty game on Friday, that's going to be, that's going to be fun. Those, those games are always yeah. fun. They played in the state quarterfinals last year, which was kind of disappointing in one way because you wanted to see if both of them could make a run. But it was also, I like, I'm not going to say no to a Regina West Liberty game. Those are always entertaining. So, and now you've got West Branch into the mix too in the River Valley. Yeah. So, like we said last week, that's, that's just going to be a fun, fun race to follow. Uh, get your popcorn ready on Friday. That's going to be, yeah, like you said, an awesome game. Um, who are any players that stuck out to you last week on the boys' side? Yeah, so there was there was uh there's a few. Uh, you know, Patrick Flanagan from Marion had four goals against West Delaware. Um, and he finds himself tied with Cole Angle for the lead on that team. And and Marion's having having a nice season. Um, so they have some some goal scores there. Um and again, I think that was a game I was hoping to get out get out last week that that got rained out. But uh, I will get out to a Marion game here soon, um, <laughs> weather weather permitting. Uh, another player, Caleb Gessner from Benton. I know I've mentioned his name on this podcast before, and uh, he had three goals against Vinton Shellsburg. And I think everybody should know the brotherly update. He now leads his brother. Casey eight to six. Caleb leads Casey in goals eight to six. So I feel uh, obligated to uh, inform everybody about that, about that race going on there between those two brothers. Um, and then the third player is, is a West Liberty player, uh, Uriel Adrande, and he had two goals in a win, in a three one win over Beckman. And that was you know I mentioned Beckman is a team that was ranked ninth last week. Um, you know the loss over West Liberty drops them just out of the rankings, but I, they're a strong team too. Um, don't count them out. They they could find themselves ranked again if they have another nice, you know, if they have a nice week. Um, but West Liberty, I mean, yeah, they're, they're just, just powerful. Uh, I'll also mention just the outside of our area, we've got a new number one team in class four this week, West Des Moines Dowling. Undefeated as Johnston was the number one team before loss to West Des Moines Valley 3 nothing on Friday. That was Johnston's first loss. And kind of funny, it was Valley's, First CIML win, which just tells you how tough that conference is to oh, beat the number one team three to nothing. So now you've got uh, Dowling, Johnston, Waukee Northwest are the top three, and Iowa City West coming in at four. And Iowa City West plays at Johnston on May 11th. So that could be, that's going to be fun to watch for the Eastern side to go up against the Central there and a rematch of the state championship game last year as well. Yeah. Yep, so gonna... um girls rankings we got those last thursday not a not a ton of changes to our area teams but i know in in 3a the mvc's now got 
three top 10 teams and Cedar Falls also got in there at fourth, not in the Gazette area, but there's been some moving up from the teams in this area. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start, I guess I'll start there. Maybe we'll work, work a little backwards here. We'll start with 3A. Uh, number five, Linmar. Um, that's that's a, a team I mentioned. I saw this last week. Boy, were they impressive. Um, big 8-0 to zero win over Prairie on Wednesday. Get this, they played back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back games last week. And they went 3-1. and one. So uh, kind of a crazy week. And again, that was weather-related, some, some postponements, some makeup games there. Um, Wednesday, they had a home game against Prairie that I was at. They won eight to zero, controlled that entire contest. Um, the next night, they're at Xavier, number ten Xavier, uh, and get a two pick up a two to zero win. And then they had a, a really impressive win against Pleasant Valley uh, the following day. Pleasant Valley came in at uh, number three in Class Three A, uh, topped them one to zero, and then you know oh, then they played the the fourth game in four days and. And probably just ran out of mustard a little bit against Bettendorf. Uh, Bettendorf is another ranked team, 13th. Um, they lost 0-3 on Saturday. But again, it's four games in four days. I, I might give them a little bit of a pass there. Still a really impressive week for the Linmar Lions. Um, and uh, and Coach Hannah Clark has is, is got quite the quite the story. Uh, Nathan, do you know much about, about Hannah Clark? Their coach I, didn't, year. I didn't know anything until I read your story in the Gazette last week. And it, it's a pretty interesting story. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? She was uh, so she grew up in, in Colorado and played on one of the elite kind of club level teams um, for several years. And then she went to Iowa and she was Iowa's goalkeeper from 2012, 2016. She was Iowa's MVP and defensive player in de defensive player of the year in 2015 First in career shutouts, second in career victories, and third in career saves. Uh, and then she went on to play two years professionally in Sweden, um, came back to Iowa to uh, recover from an injury, and has stayed coach ever since. And she's actually Mount Mercy women's coach as well. So um, <laughs> a lot going on there for, for Hannah Clark at Linmar, and it was a real pleasure to, to chat with her last week. Yeah, you'd think walking into a program like that that's used to success and you may face a little bit of pressure, but she just seems c cool, calm, collected. Like, oh, yeah, she, she's got a good team and she's not going to do much to mess it up. She's just going to roll the ball out and uh, let them let them go to work. That's exactly right. She's like the most you know competitive person uh, ever with the, you know, with the accolades to match. And but she just, you know, uh, Marco DeLeon was there, was their coach since 2015 and um, kind of handed over uh a quality team and program and, and she's just kind of taking it over and you know like you said just letting them do their thing she, she's going to put them in a position for success and and they're succeed, succeeding so far so um yeah big big week for Linmar yeah that's a that's a challenging week like you said and um you, you look at that schedule and you kind of hope you know that it wouldn't hurt them in the rankings because they've, they've it's kind of that circle of parity now between those three Bettendorf uh, Pleasant Valley. Pleasant Valley beat Bettendorf and then Bettendorf beat Linmar. Linmar beat Pleasant Valley. So it'll be interesting to see how the rankings look on Thursday. But one thing for Linmar is that does, that could help with down the road is if they get in the state tournament situation and you're playing, you know, up to three uh, really quality teams in a week and that they're certainly going to be used to that after facing the week that they just faced. So yeah, you take a loss, but they got a couple big wins in there and you're prepared down the road. So um, what about the the 2A and 1A rankings? What are what are we looking at there this week? Yeah, well, you know, I, sh I should. I got all over uh, Linmar there, but, um, you know, Iowa City High comes in at number nine oh, yeah. and, and Iowa City West at number 10. So I don't want to leave them out. They, no. You know, they're in the top 10. They deserve a, deserve a shout out. But um, honestly, it's, it's kind of a lot of the same in class 1A and 2A. Team just kind of staying steady which is good um two way you have number six independence and i feel like they've been right in that range all season they've been steady even without easton miller so you love to see that um cedar rapids xavier at number 10 uh liberty coming in at number 11 and then clear, clear creek of mana coming in at number 14 so that's a, that's a team that's uh cracked that f top 15 and and they've been pretty steady being in in that rotation and then one eighth Number nine, center point Urbana. They they really haven't moved. Um, they haven't played a lot of games this year. They're they're 
they haven't played uh, as many as, as some of the others uh, on the girls' side. Um, so they've kind of stayed steady there. And then, you know, we've, we've mentioned uh, the number 14 team before, Vinton Shellsburg. Talked about them as, as kind of a team that's gone under the radar. And, and I think this is their first time in the rankings this season. So good for them. Um, again, that's, it's, it's a team that's, uh, it's solid and steady and, and now they're, they're, they're cracking the rankings. So good for the Vikings. Yeah. Well deserved. And you were talking about some of those teams, you know, city high and West moving up to that nine, 10 range. That's getting close to getting a chance to host a, a regional game, a regional final. I mean, so, and, and obviously getting that nine, 10 game, even if you were ranked ninth or 10th and you played eighth or seventh, that's a lot better than playing fourth or third in those regional finals. So that's, yeah. those are some big moves up in the rankings there to look toward the future. And then with uh, Liberty, they beat uh, ninth ranked central DeWitt last week. So that's yeah. a nice win. And uh, we'll probably see them move up this week. DeWitt ended up losing to Regina last week as well. So it's, it might not carry as much weight, but just beating a team ranked ahead of you is going to, is going to help a lot coming up this Thursday. So Liberty in two, a could be kind of in that, that same range. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that, or just want to go into your players of the week this week. Well, I, I will mention clear Kirk Amana did have a, a, a big two Oh win against Marion on Thursday. Um, really good game. I think Marion had the lead in the first period with a goal, uh, and Amanda scored in the uh, clear kicker. Amanda scored in the second, and then get got one. I think in the second overtime period for the win. Um, so that's again a team that that I I think they were five and eleven last year. Not a team that I necessarily had on my radar. That just continues to um, you know prove people wrong and and have a strong season. So shout out to the Clippers. Uh, yeah, a, a few players of the week. Um, Linmar, Abby Roberts. She's their leading scorer. She had three of Linmar's eight goals. Uh, that was Wednesday against Prairie. She continues to have a, a fine season there. Um, another another Linmar player. I'll, I'll give some credit to uh, Mackenzie Sedgka. She had the game winning goal against uh, Pleasant, uh, yeah, Pleasant Valley on Friday. Um, so that's huge, huge win for Linmar. And then you know how can you how can you not mention Riley Buckland, their their goalkeeper there. Um, she pitched three shutouts in four games last week for Linmar. So, um, again, Linmar's stealing the spotlight a little bit this week, but after, after a week like that, uh, you deserve it. Um, and then uh, Clear Creek Amanda, uh, Lena Evans, she uh, she hit the game game time goal against Marion, and she leads the team with 11 goals. She's So she's off to a hot start. Um, I mean, CC just continues to keep moving forward. Yeah, well um... – who knows what's going to happen uh, to the schedule this week? They might change it up on you, but what are you uh, probably? <laughs> what are you planning on covering this week? What are you looking forward to? Yeah, so tonight, uh, in a little bit here, I'm going to be headed out to West Branch. They, I, I want to see West Branch play. Uh, they're going to play Prince of Peace tonight. Prince of Peace is a, a competitive team, um, but I'm just, I really want to see West Branch play. Uh, and then on the girls' side, uh, pretty good game. Clear Creek Amanda hosts CPU tomorrow night. Um, so again, I'm I don't have any wood in front of me, but I'm gonna knock on uh, knock on wood here and, and hope that both those games stay dry. I think we're good tonight. It just looks a little gray and cloudy out there and maybe windy, but I don't think it's gonna rain. Um, but those are those are the two that all uh, I plan to be at. <laughs> Um, but there are some other really good matchups this week. On the girls' side, uh, Regina plays Beckman tonight. Regina's 5-2. and two. That might be a team that, that we're looking at in the rankings next week. Um, Beckman, Beckman is 6-1, and one, ranked 15th. So I would, would kind of assume the winner of that game is probably going to, you know, be well in the top 15 there. Um, Vinton Shellsburg versus Marion also play tonight. And, you know, the Vikings crank uh, cracked the rankings for the first time at number 14. And Marion's kind of looking to rebound after that overtime loss against Clear Creek Amana. And then uh, Linmar hosts Bettendorf on Friday. So they'll get another another crack at it there um, with fresh legs this time. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's fun. that's nice. I like the uh, the do little double header there. To, uh, more like a basketball schedule where you get to see a team twice in a season and see how you match up. Uh the different couple different times so that'll be fun that'll be a good week 
Uh, we're almost getting toward May, hard as, hard as it is to believe. Um, Going to be down to almost a month left in the season. So the games only get more important. Yeah. And you know what? The weather, knock on wood, only gets better. It's yep. going to get hot, but uh, I'll take that all day. And yeah. Uh, all day. Yeah. It'll be a sweaty in Des Moines and at the state tournament, but that's better than rainy. If it last, I, I guess last year wasn't great. You know, we had some delays and thunderstorms, but yeah, I'll take, I'll take the heat over that for sure. Yeah. Wouldn't have so it's going to do it. Nathan, one last note. I'm going to go over a couple boys matchups that I think are worth mentioning. And I, you know, the West Liberty Regina matchup Friday. Yeah. That's, that's the game I'm super excited about two, two top three. Yeah. Top three teams. Now that's going to be exciting. Um, Prairie plays Liberty Tuesday. Those are two teams that have uh, traditionally been, you know, Liberty was the 3A state champ last year. Off to a slow start this year, but they were off to a slow start last year too. That's that's kind of a game where I see two area teams that are looking to bounce back. Uh, and the last one, Decor versus NFV, and that's on Friday, and that's two ranked area teams. That um, That's a toss-up if you ask me. So uh, some really good games on both sides, and I'm excited. That is, yeah, that's, those are great games. Prairie has lost – four games in a row, but they're all against really good teams. Yeah. So there's almost like a little bit of like feeling like they need to win one same with Liberty, but they've just played such tough schedule. So that's interesting that that matchup comes at that time. And right. Core NFV is about the closest game to me nowadays. So <laughs> but yeah, that's true. Still a little, still a little far, but I'll definitely be tracking to see what happens in that because that's, that's an exciting one. So hopefully uh, all of our, viewers and listeners can get out to a game or two or three or four if you're like the Linmar girls last week and uh, <laughs> yeah. thanks again for tuning in to park the bus and we'll we'll talk to you next week